Good morning, myself Amal Mohammed, Department of Civil Engineering, Vedavyasa Institute of Technology. Today, I am here before to present a tech talk on the topic Braced Frames. Braced frames are a structural system which are designed to resist the wind and the earthquake forces. It is generally made of structural steel which can work effectively both in the tension and the compression phases. Buildings adopting high tech or the post modernist styles have responded to this by expressing the bracing as an internal and external architectural features. Bracing is highly efficient and economical method of resisting the horizontal forces in a frame structure. A braced bend consists of usual columns and the girders. So the main purpose of this braced frame is to support the gravity loading and diagonal bracing members. Historically, bracing has been used to stabilize laterally the majority of the world's tallest building structures. The Statue of Liberty, constructed in the New York 1883, was one of the first major braced structure. In the following three decades, large number of braced steel frames for the tall buildings were erected in Chicago and in New York. The figure shows the Statue of Liberty, which was constructed by using the same technique. The 57 story, 792 feet high braced steel wool tower completed in 1913 established a high truck wood, which it held until the 77th story. 1046 feet high Chrysler building and the 102 story, 1250 feet high Empire Street building were completed in 1930 and 1931 respectively. Diagonal bracing is, is an obstructing to the architectural plan. It can pose problems in the internal space and the traffic as well as in locating the window and door openings uh, as in case of low or moderate rise building that are not particularly slender. So in a slender moderate rise building or a truly high rise building the location of the lateral load resisting vents is more important. Types of the bracing system, mainly the types of uh, the bracing systems are classified as first one, horizontal bracing. Horizontal bracing is needed at each floor level, however the flow system itself may not provide sufficient resistance. So roof may require bracings. Next one, vertical bracing. Vertical meaning running from top to bottom is the other half of the bracing system with, which consists of horizontal braces. Types of the bracing which is used with the steel beams. First one is single diagonals. If a single brace is used, it, it must be sufficiently resistant to resist the tension and the compression forces. This is one of the simplest method of bracing but can be just as strong if it, if it is done right only. Figure shows one of the single braced member. The next one is cross bracing. When two diagonal uh, members cross each other. This is known as a cross bracing or X bracing. These braces need to be in tension resistant while each braces resist the horizontal forces. Steel cables can be used for this kind of bracing. The figure shows the cross bracing. Third one, K bracing. Typically, K bracing connects two columns at the mid height and is thus more flexible to working around the windows and generally results in reduced bending in floor beams. However, K bracing may potentially cause column failures in case of the compression brace buckles and thus may not increase in the earthquake prone regions. The fourth one, V bracing. In the V bracing style, two diagonal elements are framed in a V shape, stretching down from top to corners of a horizontal element and join at the center of a lower horizontal element. When the V is inverted, it is also known as chevron bracing. The two elements in the V meet at the center of an upper horizontal element. Uh, next, moving on to the behavior of the braced frames. 
braced frame in the braced frame the columns will act as a cords for resisting the overturning moment with tension in the windward column and compression in the leeward column the diagonals work as a web members resisting the horizontal shear in axial compression or tension depending upon the direction of the inclination the beams act axially when the system is fully triangulated truss Uh, braced frames undergo bending only when the braces are eccentrically connected the effect of axial deformation of the columns will result in the flexural configuration of the direction of the deflection with concavity downwind and a maximum slope at the top the axial deformations of the web members on the other hand will cause a shear configuration of deflection with concavity upwind and a maximum slope at the base and a zero slope at the top the resulting deflected shape of the frame uh, will be a combination of the effect of the flexural and the shear curves with a resultant configuration depending upon their relative magnitude as determined mainly by the type of bracings